Hello, you're watching Deal Flow, the show that tracks merger and acquisition activity in Africa and beyond. We talk to all the deal makers, the target companies, and the MA analysts. My name is Erika van der Marwit. Thanks for joining us. We start off as usual with our deals of the week. Thanks, Erika. Let's take a look at the deals of the week. While well, Uber has raised the $1.2 billion in funding from mutual funds and investors, the U.S. venture-funded startup and transportation network is now valued at around $18.2 billion. Moving on to other deals of the week, Bitco Refineries plans to invest in a $19.4 million beverage plant in Kenya. The manufacturer of edible oils in East and Central Africa plans to produce non-carbonated drinks, carbonated soft drinks and water. And finally, private equity owners of AA struck a deal to sell its 69% stake in the British merging organisation ahead of a planned flotation later this month. Now, Premier Charterhouse and CVC plans to sidestep the problems they had listing their sister company Saga last month. Well, that was a look at the deals of the week. Back to you. PayCorp, which is one of South Africa's leading non-bank payment service providers, has acquired a 100% stake of the issued share capital of Sycom Group, the holding company of Kazang Prepaid and Sycom Payphones. To speak more on this new chapter in the business's life, Stephen Cock, he's CEO of PayCorp, and he joins us. Welcome, Stephen. Thank you, Erica. And I think we spoke about a new chapter. So there's a new chapter. You've been at this business. You were one of the founders 15 years. So you've seen the evolution. You've seen different equity providers. How would you describe this stage? of PayCorp's growth? Well, uh, firstly, thanks for having me this morning. Uh, this stage of PayCorp's growth, I think, is, is the next uh, chapter in our, in our stage of development. Uh, we have a new shareholder, as you know, in Actus, uh, which recently bought the business together with management from Transaction Capital. And uh, with Actus uh, on site as, uh, as our majority shareholder, we've got a shareholder with true emerging market capability and credibility and huge appetite. So we see uh, the, the corporate activity that we've uh, now done over the last uh, few months. Uh, we see this as the start mm -hmm. of, of a very exciting new chapter in our business. So Stephen, it is a point of inflection, right? So we know Actus um, has a sort of a pan-African region. They, it's a, pri a private equity provider with a pan-African focus. So is that what you've seen with them coming on board and, and literally on your board, presumably, that they've, they've encouraged you to, to move further north? Yeah, I think, I think two things. We have a very, very good, stable, uh, growing, organic business in South Africa, in our ATM business, in our card business, in our point of sale business. I think to the extent that we can buy businesses north of our borders that leverage off this big fixed infrastructure that we've got in South Africa, that has to be the model. So Actus has been very supportive of those efforts to date and, uh, and been integral in some of the transactions that we've been looking at. So to be clear, so what I understand is you take your South African businesses and get them to expand operationally. Do you see yourself in the next five years, say, doing actual sort of acquisitions outside of South Africa? Yeah, for sure. I mean, this, now, this uh, recent one that we've just spoken about, Kazang, they have uh, businesses uh, up into Africa in six African countries where they have distributors in country and they do all of the heavy lifting from South Africa. That's a model that we like and we know and we understand very well. For example, we've got a fantastic ATM business in Namibia. What do we have in Namibia? We have a branch manager, we have two field service technicians and small infrastructure in country. And what we do is we leverage off the big fixed infrastructure that we have in South Africa, mm -hmm. the settlement, the processing of transactions, the balancing, the reconciliations that make up a payments business, for us to make that kind of investment in a small country makes no sense. So the model has to be to buy businesses that are infrastructure light in country and we can do that heavy lifting that I spoke about in South Africa. So Stephen, so far in your dealings over the last 15 years and as, as a, a business has evolved and grown, what have been the, the biggest challenges for you? So I'd imagine you know, you're dealing with cash in many instances, so I can see sort of red flags there, but also operating in various countries with different regulatory regimes, although even though you say you do the heavy lifting from South Africa, there must be such challenges. Well, I think two things. I think uh, a payments business by its very nature is a very, very high volume, low margin business. So you're having to process billions and billions of rands worth of transactions to make a few million rands. So you just don't have any margin to play with. So your, your margin for error is very small. So you are always subject to crime is a big one, both physical crime. I mean, we've got nearly 5,000 ATMs float around, floating around the country, not floating, hopefully, stuck in the, in the ground in the country, uh, full of money 
money. So people are constantly trying to break into the ATMs. Our systems are always trying to be hacked. So you're always having, having to stay one step ahead from a, from a crime and a risk point of view just because you have no margin. I suppose north of our borders, uh, we are going into countries by and large with uh, our banking partners. We have fantastic relationships with the Absa Barclays of the world, Standard Banks, uh, Cavmont Bank, which is a sister bank of Bank Vintook in Namibia. So we go into country with, with bank um, uh, uh, oversight and bank relationships. So we're not going on there, uh, in there cold and alone. Mm. So you've, you've got a, a very interested um, and focused equity provider in Actus in, in, in driving the strategy. So you've, you've put some debt into this uh, Kazang deal as well. So have the debt providers been as enthusiastic? Well, I must say, uh, thank goodness to date, uh, two things. One, we have a very, very good quality uh, organic business that, that throws off cash, that can support some level of debt in the business. And obviously that debt was used uh, to make the acquisition of the Paycorp asset from transaction capital. So that's just the plain acquisition debt. And our debt providers, uh, both Investec and RMB, which are two debt providers, have been very supportive uh, of our expansion uh, strategies to date. And I think they'll play a key part going forward. So if we bring good businesses that have predictable cash flows and can leverage off the infrastructure that we've built, right. I think we'll find big supporters there. Indeed. So Stephen, if you can describe <coughs> your model. So you've got three or four pillars in the business. Um, and, and this Kazang acquisition, so it really bulks up, up your, your fourth level of the business and to my mind also touching on the unbanked in South Africa and also in the region. So where else do you see a growth or, or change or sort of a change in direction happening? So the, the fundamental uh, underpin for, for all of our businesses, our commercial legitimacy that we have in our model is that we provide financial services to the underserviced. I mean, originally our ATM business rode the wave of a retail change that, change that we saw in South Africa from the corner cafe to the convenience store to the petrol station, supermarket and the like. And we were at the forefront of putting ATM machines uh, in, in retail locations, which in the past, I mean, maybe now we see it's become almost commonplace, but in the past that wasn't the case. So all of our businesses, be it our ATM business, our card business, our POS, our debit and credit card acquiring business that we have, are geared towards providing financial inclusion. I mean, we have a fantastic mobile POS offering, a, a instant issue card offering called Reload. We have a great offering uh, that makes sense to the underbanked. Now comes Kazang. Uh, really three reasons why we bought that business. First and foremost is it does add a meaningful fourth pillar to our business, to our portfolio of offerings. You know, in the past we would sell airtime and electricity through our ATMs or POS, but these guys are specialists. They have nearly 13,000 locations dotted around South Africa. That's a hard job to go out and get 13,000 sites, specifically in rural, in peri-urban and township sites. So a great distribution arm, a meaningful fourth pillar, good cross-sell opportunities for our other products, and most importantly, as I st discussed up front, uh, the, this representation in six African countries that we can leverage off. So it makes sense for us. And these, these are the kind of deals that we'll be looking at. All right. So who are you, are you perhaps wrestling off um, at these various distribu distribution points or at the various acquisition points for, for actual business assets? So who else is looking into this space? Uh, I mean, there are lots of players. I mean, there are in each of our four pillars that we have, be it now ATM or card or POS, and now more recently, the airtime and electricity business, there are other players, but focused on one or two of those. There is no end-to-end payment services provider like a Paycorp. You know, there are other people that dabble, not dabble, they, that operate in each of these areas, but no one with an end-to-end -end comprehensive offering like us. So presumably some opportunities for you for some further corporate action, or would you prefer to expand organically at this stage in the areas where you are operational? No, no doubt there'll be further corporate activity. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at two other transactions now as we speak. Um, I, you know, I, they, I think in any business, specifically where you've got uh, a manager management team that's uh, significant e equity holders and a uh, equity partner in actors that's pushing hard there'll always be organic uh, uh there always be acquisitive opportunities, but we need to, to balance the healthy, uh, good, solid, organic business that we have today that is still showing growth, meaningful growth. I mean, on the ATM side, we're still putting in 40 or 50 ATMs a month. That's one, uh, you know, two machines every single day. Yes. So that business is still growing. Uh, and on the M&A, on the, on the corporate side, we just need to make sure that we buy the right stuff at the right prices and that it can actually add value to our infrastructure. Yes. 
<clears throat> Stephen, I want to hear what your vision is, because to me, you embody entrepreneurship, the enthusiasm, the optimism. One of the deals you've done since Actus has, has become your owner is uh, that you, you bought a business in Eastern Europe. So up to now, you know, I've been speaking about Africa. So are you wanting to take on the world? Obviously. <laughs> uh, uh, our big, hairy, audacious goal uh, is nothing short of being the preeminent emerging market pavement provider in the world. It's as simple as that. We have, we have a fantastic management team. We have a good, solid, strong local business uh, and infrastructure that can support significantly more traffic than what we have today. So we will buy businesses anywhere that, as I say, can add value to or leverage off our infrastructure. We took a small stake in an Eastern European ATM deployer. We think that that market is interesting. Thing. It's underserviced card holders versus ATM machines. We have fantastic operators in that area, a very, very uh, healthy market dynamic, good revenue per transaction. So we will buy assets and go into uh, anywhere that can add value to our business. Well, Stephen, thank you. We're watching you. We'll, uh, presumably, we'll chat again soon when we talk about one of your new deals. Hopefully. Thanks to my guest, Stephen Kark. He's CEO of PayCorp. And from me, Erica Panamadova, it's goodbye.